Flipped, a professional development program for higher degree supervisors and students. Greetings to you. My name is Tara Brabazon and I'm the Dean of Graduate Studies at Charles Darwin University. Welcome to this flipped professional development session for Charles Darwin University academics and higher degree students. Our topic, the short book. Academic publishing is transforming, and we're going to talk about many of these transformations in our flipped sessions this year. And one of these transformations is the short book. These are books between 25,000 words and 40,000 words in length. That is, say, about three articles. Now, there's such an important part of publishing because they're linked strongly with e-books as well. And that's part of the transformations to work, to leisure and commuting. We'll talk about all of this in a minute. But the desire to slot reading into a time-poor working environment is important and it's powerful to recognise. For academics, this change gives us a great platform. It gives us a great platform for those types of projects that are longer than an article but shorter than the conventional monograph. I remain a fan and incredibly inspired by the Bauhaus, remarkable designers who implemented one principle, form follows function. For academics, this means the function, the content of our research, determines the form, the shape of our research. Some research is best presented in a thousand words in a discussion journalistic piece. Some research is best presented in a podcast. Some research is best expressed through a short book or indeed a refereed article. Form follows function. And that's why these small books matter. And remember, this is for all disciplines. Anyone who says scientists don't write books has not only forgotten Albert Einstein and Stephen Hawking, but the fact that Springer Science is one of the largest academic publishers in the world. Pick an area of science or engineering, there's a book series on it and a short book series on it. So let's do this. Today's flipped training session is going to be practical as much as exploratory and explanatory. I'm going to tell you where it might be a really great option for you to send your short books and the publishers that have committed strongly to them. This is a trend and an important movement and an important moment. Leonard Casuto in the Chronicle of Higher Education in August 2013 described, quote, the rise of the mini monograph, end of quote. This movement is also described as short form publishing, with long form, of course, being the conventional monograph of 60,000 to 70,000 words in length. The definition, therefore, of the book is changing, framed by digitization and the growth of the ebook. This mini monograph has particular characteristics. They pass through a much faster review process and path to publication. Often it's 12 weeks to publication. That is the standard proposed by most academic publishers. And this means topical research can remain topical. This mode of publication is now possible because digitization has rendered it economically viable. A bookshop may have challenges promoting a short book, but Amazon doesn't, Apple doesn't. Joseph Aposito used the great phrase that, quote, shorts are native to digital media, end of quote. The Kindle, the iBooks have rendered all sorts of modes and lengths of book possible. Certainly short books exist in the analog print era, and what is called chunking was present. So chunking takes an already existing book and takes a chunk out of it and republishes it in a different form. We know about this. And Penguin are the masters of this. They got into short books decade, decades before the rest. And their short books, their tiny books, in fact, take an important chapter from George Orwell or Anthony Giddens or Michael Moore and create a paperback that's a very, very quick read. 
They have many versions of the small book. Penguin Modern is a great example of it. They call it a, quote, concentrated hit, <laughs> end of quote, of an author's work. But they've also produced the short e-book, bought for £1.99p, that's the same price basically as a cup of coffee. And in fact, that's a pretty cheap cup of coffee. The digital short read will also be the form to watch. This is the short story or the long essay or the pamphlet for non-fiction writers. These are much shorter, between 10,000 and 20,000 words. So we also have to watch this micro monograph as well, particularly digitally. But let's now go through this short monograph with academic publishers. So we're dealing with, say, about 30,000 to about 40,000 words in length. That's the most frequent length. Let's go through some examples of this short book. Palgrave Pivot was, I think, the first to do this from 2012, from Palgrave Macmillan, and their span of words are 30,000 words to 50,000 words in length. Emerald Points is a very, very strong intervention in this field. Timely publications, 12 weeks from submission to publication, and they focus on the slightly shorter length, 20,000 to 40,000 words in length. Now, Springer Briefs. I've published a lot of books with Springer and in Springer Briefs, and they have a deep commitment to all disciplines and books in all disciplines, including the sciences. They focus attention on analytical techniques, contextual literature reviews, hot topics, (laughs) and in-depth case studies or clinical examples, or indeed the big concept. And these lengths span from 20,000 words to 50,000 words. University presses are also part of this movement. Stanford Briefs runs from 20,000 to 40,000 words in length. The publishing director and editor-in-chief of Stanford University Press, Kate Wall, stated that the same level of refereeing and vetting takes place, but she argues that these are, quote, not brief books, but a new style of book, end of quote. She wants them to create new spaces for argument and debate with an audience that may and indeed will reach outside of academia. This is an argument-driven style of writing that creates new spaces for flexible and different academic styles. Oxford University Press have also entered in this field, but they're more on the textbook side with their very short introductions series. Called Pocket Portables, they are introductions into a topic. But I would argue that they are are more focused on teaching, but that's great too, but it's a bit different from what we're talking about today. So these books are flexible in format, produced at speed, and arch into ebooks, thereby radically widening the audience for academic books. And they can also activate very, very sexy topics that don't have to be sustained over 70,000 words. Books like, and I'll just give you some great sexy examples, The Digital Afterlives of Jane Austen, Adoption, A Brief Social and Cultural History, Managing the Experience of Hearing Loss in Britain, 1830 to 1930. Now, I want to read all of these books, and all of these titles are from Palgrave Pivot. Pithy, short, edgy. This is a new way of thinking about academic writing. I remember there was an article in The New Yorker in 2014 by Joshua Rothman. The title was brilliant. Quote, Why is academic writing so academic? I never apologise about being an academic. I am proud of it. I am really proud of the research that all of us do. But being an academic doesn't mean we can't write in different ways. We have our top-end research written in our specialist languages for our colleagues, but we also must work on our prose to create new audiences for our research. So I'm not talking about stopping doing academic writing. In fact, I'm arguing the exact opposite. We must do more of it, and we must disseminate the research in different ways, 
in different platforms and in different modes. And yes, that includes blogs and websites and Twitter, X, streams, podcasts and the short book. I've written six of these short books at the moment, many monographs, I'll write a lot more, but six short books, and each of them have had a different purpose and summons one of the aims or imperatives of the small book. To provide a context around this as well, they emerged when I was in leadership posts in university. So when I was a head of department, head of school, dean of graduate research, dean of graduate studies, and I refused and I refuse to allow these leadership jobs to stop me being research active. I did not want to be one of those academic managers that stopped being an academic when they became a manager. But in these jobs, the research days ended. In fact, the capacity to complete a research hour ends. My research was and is done very early in the morning, late at night and on weekends. So the big project, the big 75,000 word book, wasn't very easy to insert into this work pattern. But I was also developing ideas that were innovative and important. The short book was ideal for these jobs and these projects. Three of them were part of the Springer Brief series, which I can strongly recommend. The first was Digital Wine. This demonstrates the specialist nature of these small books, by the way. This book investigated the use of QR codes to brand new wine industries, particularly small premium wine industries. The impact of this rather specialist book was was incredible with firms around the world using QR codes on the array of wine packaging, citing us in their marketing campaigns. The next go at the short book was Enabling University. I wrote this while I was ahead of school and I wanted to make sure that universal design was part of online and offline higher education. So it was a political book, it made an argument. And my third attempt was Unique Urbanity, Rethinking Third Tier Cities, Degeneration, Regeneration and Mobility. And this became my consultancy business card, probably the most valuable book I've ever written in terms of consultancy. It claimed the space of the small cities, the large towns, and showed how regeneration can take place. So whenever anyone needs some work on small cities, who are you going to call? So the next book was written with Steve Redhead and Sunny Rushavara, and it was titled Trump Studies, an intellectual guide to why citizens vote against their own best interests. This is a political book. It needed to be a quick book and published quickly, but it was also a high theory book. It provided the explanation. In fact, it provides the explanation to why Trump existed, why Brexit happened, why all the weird political stuff has been emerging around us. So the short publishing timeline has made a difference to this book. It was delivered in July 2018. It was published in October 2018 and marketed through the key Christmas period. It also sold way up to the 2020 election and of course not surprisingly it's got a new life now in 2024. But this is a great example of how these short books can make a clear argument thereby creating an audience far beyond academics. My other couple of short books were The Creative PhD with Dr. Tiffany Lindell Knight and Natalie Hills, looking at the challenges and the strengths of creative-led PhDs. And obviously, 12 Rules for Academic Life. This book explored academia and offered a pretty strong critique of Jordan Peterson. They're the types of books that can be written. So if you want to claim a specialist space offer an argument on a contemporary issue, present a coherent piece on method or a trope or a topic, then the short book may be a really strong option for you. But also remember, you may be in a teaching-only position. You may be in a really, really tough postdoc and then another postdoc and then another postdoc and then a permadoc. Don't give up on your research. Recognise the diversity of publishing options that can assist you to keep moving and maintain your momentum. No excuses. There is a mode of dissemination that will suit you and your circumstances and your stage of your career and your research. And I look forward to talking with you soon about the short books that may exist in your future. See you soon.